and a new approach and a new method that you'll not say what you used to say and when it comes to sh time to shout yours will be the victory romans chapter 16 obedience of faith romans chapter 16 i'm looking at verse 26 16 26 but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting god made known unto all nations for the obedience of faith i want you to notice what it says now is made manifest those people the children of israel they could say when those jericho walls came down joshua you said so our leader you said so now it is manifest and then at the end for the obedience of faith it is made manifest in line for the obedience of faith join those two things in your mind at the beginning of the verse now is made manifest at the end of the verse for the obedience of faith if anything is going to be manifested a miracle to be revealed signs and wonders to be made manifest in our lives and it's going to be manifest and then it says it is now i said it is now now is made manifest for the obedience of faith and then it says and by the scriptures of the prophets by the scriptures of the prophets that is by the truth that joshua had told them that how it was manifested the channel by which the manifestation will come is what had been said according to the commandment of the everlasting god he told them you walk around once a day for six days on the seventh day you'll go around seven days and it was a commandment of the everlasting god and then it says it is made known unto all nations it is now made known that has been reaching down for all nations for you and for me so that if we will do what they did we'll have the result they had i said we'll have the result they had they had the victory we are going to have the victory they had success we are going to have success they had signs and wonders we're going to have signs and wonders but it says for the obedience of faith we're looking at hebrews chapter 11. hebrews chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 8 you will see whatever god does you might not see the other side of the wall all the lord is expecting is to have faith and by that faith to obey hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 by faith abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance he obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went you see that it says by faith by faith by faith he was called to go out to a place which he should after receive for an inheritance inheriting the promise of god inheriting the fulfillment the accomplishment of the promise of god something you have never known something you have never tasted something you have never received and you are going to receive and it says by faith he obeyed he went out not knowing whither he went how did he do that how did he accomplish that i'll tell you by not looking at what can be seen and looking at what cannot be seen looks like a contradiction what everybody can see that you don't look at what nobody sees that is what you are looking at you are not looking at what is visible you are not looking at the walls that are visible you are not looking at the challenges that are visible you are looking at the invisible oh you say is that possible how can you stop looking at what is seen and looking at what cannot be seen look at somebody that did that we're looking at verse 27 hebrews chapter 11 verse 27 by faith he forsook egypt not fearing the wrath of the king not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is what who is invisible seeing him who is invisible every time moses appeared before pharaoh 
And Pharaoh frowned, and Pharaoh got angry, and Pharaoh said, you'll not see my face anymore. The day you see my face, you will die. Moses did not see him. He saw the invisible God. And when Moses came before the river, the Red Sea, and the children of Israel, all they could see was what was visible. Moses did not look at that. He looked at what was invisible. He came by the rock, and the people of Israel needed water to drink. How will water come out? The children of Israel were looking at what is visible, but Moses was looking at that which is invisible. And when you're looking at our God who is invisible, your, your object of faith, you are going to get through. And you're going to cross over even today in Jesus' name. A new change has come. I said a new change has come. Because we're looking at what is invisible. And it is when we obey that obedience of faith, that is what will make us cross over. We're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 22. 1 Samuel chapter 15. And we're looking at verse 22. And Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings, and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than what? Better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. I want you to think of the children of Israel again. The Lord told them through Joshua. And he said, you'll pass around, walk around, move around the walls of Jericho. Just once a day. And don't utter any word. Don't let any word proceed out of your mouth. So you don't get back into the temptation of the children of Israel in the wilderness saying, huh, we're walking around now, but look at these walls. We're walking around now, but look at how tall, how high the walls are. We're walking around, but look at how thick they are. Don't allow any word to come out of your mouth. Just walk around and do your part. Do your bit. And if you're faithful, do what the Lord has told you to do. The Lord will be faithful. He will do his own part in Jesus' name. To obey is better than sacrifice and to hack in than the fat of rams. And what are we listening to? What are we hacking to? That we don't say any negative words in our mouth. This year, will you change your language? This year, all those things you used to say. Anytime you add a challenge in the family, you remember what you used to say? Don't say that again. Anytime you add, maybe you felt a little cold. You know what he used to say? I'm catching. I will not catch. I said I will not catch anything anybody throws. I'm not going to catch what they throw. I said I'm not going to catch what they throw. But you know what, what people used to say? Uh, my brother prayed for me. I'm catching. No, I'm not going to mention that. I'm not catching anything. And then my husband, my wife prayed for me. I'm catching. I'm not catching it this year. I said I'm not catching it this year. You know, people that live their lives by negative dreams, negative dreams, you know. You wake up in the morning and they say, you know what I saw? Well, I only see the Almighty God. I said, I only see the power of God. I only see the invisible. All those dreams, I don't see them anymore. I don't see you following after dreams. I said, are you following after dreams? They told me in the dream, I shut my ears, don't even mention it to me. Don't, because the Almighty God told me something already before your dream. And what the Lord has said, what the Lord has said will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Because the word of God is on a surer foundation than any dream. And we cancel every negative dream in your life this year in Jesus' name. And let's see in Proverbs chapter 21 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 21. Verse 23, whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from trouble. That's why the Lord told them, keep your tongue and keep your mouth. And don't say any negative thing. Don't, sh don't shout. Don't shout even for joy or for sorrow, for defeat or whatever. Until I tell you, shout. And it says, whoso keepeth his mouth. And his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. Let's look at chapter 13 of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. Chapter 13, verse 3. It says, He that keepeth his mouth. Keepeth what? Tell me out loud. 
Tell me again. It's life. And he that keepeth, and when we say it's life, what does that mean? Your life, well, your physical stress, your existence, and your being able to still stay on earth, your health, your possession. He that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. You go to the office, and then they, they, they're already turn out, they're saying, have you heard? Have you heard? Ten people have gone. They have retrained, they have stopped. Ten people, they said it, they were going to do it. And then the rest of the people, this one will say, I don't know when we come next week, what I do my turn. I don't know what, when we come next time, it will be my turn. Now, so can you imagine so and so? How faithful, how dutiful. Now he's gone. They've retrenched him and he has lost his job. And if so and so can lose his job, where do I stand? That's a problem. Where do I stand? I'm standing on the rock of ages. And no storm can shake the rock. And no storm will shake you in Jesus' name. He that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. You know, sometimes there are people that maybe you're feeling some kind of symptom in your body. And because of that symptom, you know what you do? Just at that, that's the, that's the greatest de delicate moment to keep your tongue. And not to be telling everybody, look at what I'm feeling. And they say, they say, if somebody is feeling like this, then the consequences like that, keep your tongue and you'll keep your life. I said you'll keep your life. And I'll see you next time. Because you'll still remain alive. I said you'll remain alive. And then if Jesus tarries, another covenant month will come, another year. And if Jesus tarries, if you keep your tongue and you keep your life, we'll see one another again in Jesus' name. Amen. He that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. I'm looking at uh, Hebrew, First Peter, now First Peter. We're looking at chapter 3. First Peter, chapter 3. And we're looking at verse 10. First Peter, chapter 3. Verse 10. For he that will love life, anybody here loving life? Or somebody here loving death, anybody love death? Destruction, despair, discouragement, devastation. What do you love? For he that will love life, where are they? Praise the Lord. You'll get what you desire. You'll get what you love. But don't talk about what you don't love. Don't talk about what you don't want. Don't talk about what you fear. Talk about what you love, what you want, what you desire. And that which you desire, you will have. For he that will love life and see what? What are you going to see this year? Tell me. You will see it. I said you will see it. Let me remind you again, don't talk about what you don't want to see. You don't want to see bad days. Anybody want to see bad days? Don't talk about it then. Talk about what you want to see. And talk about what you love. Talk about what you desire. And don't see what other people see. See the invisible. The invisible is just around the corner. That's what I see. I said, that's what I see. He that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. And his leaves that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and eschew it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Any righteous person here today? The eyes of the Lord are upon you. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. This day we're going to pray, and heaven will listen to the prayer you offer to the Lord. The Lord will answer your prayer in Jesus' name. Now, number one is a great object of your faith. That's the Almighty God. Number two is a gracious obedience of your faith. And that is what the Lord has told us. But in particular now, concerning our tongue, our leaves, our mouth, to say only good, the good things we want to see. Number three, the glorious outcome of their faith and the glorious outcome of our faith. The glorious outcome of faith. 
What's the outcome? Let's look at Joshua, Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. I'm looking at verse 20. Now, as I read this, I'm thinking about the children of Israel 40, year, 40 years before. Those 12 spies came. And they must have seen Jericho as one of those cities. And it was this Jericho and other cities that struck fear, terror in their hearts. And it was because of those giants and because of those kings and because of those warriors and because of those walls that they were not able to move in if they had only known that only one shout would have brought all their enemies down they would not have said what they said if you only knew that only one prayer will solve your problem only one shout will get your Jericho walls now. If you only knew the outcome of a faith today, all the negative things that have been occurring in your mind, you'll never give any attention to them, and you will stop giving attention to them in Jesus' name. I think if uh, all those uh, people that died in the wilderness, if they could, anywhere they were at that time, if they could look on now and see the children of Israel just walk around, and they'll say, watch. Is it so simple? This is what we could have done if we had been alive. This is the way we could have got the victory if we had remained alive. They just went around and they sat down one whole day. That's all for today. And then second day and third day and fourth day and fifth day and sixth day. And then they sat down. And then on the seventh day, Joshua said, now get up. And seven times walk around. And they walked around seven times. And then he said, now get ready, get ready. You're having it now. The people that missed it. If they were watching them from wherever they were, they would be, oh, is it so simple like this? And this day, you know, the people who have left this place long ago, and they say, I'm looking for charge, I'm looking for healing, I'm looking for deliverance, I'm looking for this and that. And because it didn't come at that time, then they went, I don't know where they have gone, but thank God, I'm not talking to them, I'm talking to you who are here. I said, I'm talking to those of you who are here. And then now, as I'm almost through, I'm almost, and when I'm through, then you are through. Yeah. When I'm through, those walls will come down. Yeah. And when I'm through, that sickness will go. Yeah. When I'm through, that miracle will come. Yeah. And then those who are out there, they'll be one. Oh, I didn't. If I knew it was that simple, I would have stayed. God has a reward for those who have stayed. I said, God has a reward for those who have stayed. The glorious outcome of faith. Look at verse 20 now. Joshua chapter 6 verse 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the shout, the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall, that the wall, Look up here for a moment. You know, it's, it's something for the wall to fall. I heard of somebody cutting a tree, cutting a tree down. And when the tree was going to fall, the, the tree fell on him and he died. You know, as you look at all those people, and they were all surrounding the walls. And they shouted, and the walls fell. And the wall never fell on any of them. Never, never, never. Because the Lord is watching over you. The wall, the, the wall, even though the wall did not have any eyes to see, all the children of Israel there gathering all around, and the Jericho walls fell. You know, we just used to think the Jericho walls fell, Jericho walls fell. Yes, but you know, the millions of people there, and not nobody was hurt by the fall. You'll not be hurt. Yeah. When the walls begin to fall, when the miracles begin to happen, when the sicknesses begin to get healed. And when all those attacks and afflictions, when they are destroyed. Now, if somebody, a, a devil is coming out there. A demon is coming out there. When it comes out anywhere you are, just stay where you are. It will never touch you. Yeah. Whatever comes out of another person will not come to you. Yeah. Whatever falls from another person's life will never fall on you. Yeah. The walls will fall. The demons will be cast out. The sicknesses will be healed. The barrenness will be taken away. The impossibilities will become possible. But no problem that comes out of another person will come over you. It will go to the people of the world. But for you, you are totally free in Jesus' name. 
and says the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city every man straight before him and they took the city you will take the city yeah. hebrews chapter 11 verse 30 hebrews chapter 11 we're looking at verse 30 that's conquering by faith getting the victory by faith hebrews 11 verse 30 by faith the walls of jericho fell down you see why they shouted because they believed by faith by faith by faith the walls of jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days it's by faith it's by faith and by 